Hi, this is Daryl Webster with another tip for your class notebooks that have been created with the OneNote class notebook creator. What we'll be looking at is a few ways to create these resources using some of the features of OneNote. One of the features we'll be looking at is printing with OneNote. We'll also be looking at creating them from screen clippings with from an existing resource. Cal Armstrong at Appleby College has created a great video for this already, uh, which I will put in the resources for my blog post. It's creating homework from uh, for your page within OneNote. We can also use the Office Lens or a similar program to take a picture of your physical copy of your handouts and we'll look at how we can make that into a OneNote page. And we'll also look at an example of what we might do with the same resource, creating it from scratch from the start within OneNote. Now these resources can be shared within the content section of your class notebook that's been created by the OneNote class notebook creator. Students will be able to copy these resources from the content library and use them within their own notebooks. You might also use some of these resources in the collaboration space so that you can get responses from the class all together on the same page. So the first way we'll look at creating a resource is printing to OneNote. There's two ways to do this within OneNote. We can either print directly to OneNote from a document or we can drag and drop the file into the OneNote page. Now what we'll do is we'll look at a resource that I've already created. I've got on my class site here, I've created a, a homework assignment task and I have created a, a resource in a traditional program in, in Word. So here's an example of my handout for a friction exercise and there's just some tables to fill out, there's a picture to look at and understand and then um, some spaces to answer the questions. So that's quite straightforward. Now one thing that's great about OneNote is it installs something like a printer. So whenever you go to a program where you can print to paper, you'll also be able to print to OneNote. So let's have a look at that now. Within the file area we'll go to print our page and we'll choose OneNote from our printers. Here's our OneNote printer and we'll just print to OneNote. Now what we get within OneNote is a, a short prompt there about where to, to send that page to. And within our recent picks, just as a tip here, we've always got somewhere that's um, the current page and that's where I'm on and that's where I want it to um, end up. So I'm going to choose current page, click OK. And it's printed out my handout from the Word document. What we've done by printing to OneNote is essentially put in an image of that page. So what we can do, because it's an image, is we can now resize it to make it a bit bigger for people to, for students to be able to work with on their OneNote pages. So we'll drag the corners out of this image. Give them a bit more space. And something else that we can do to make sure that the image itself of the worksheet isn't being um, interfered or moved with, um, making it easier for us to, to write or to type over the top of it, is because it's an image we can right click and say set as background. So what this means now is that I can place any text box wherever I wish and I can begin to type an answer. So is the friction wanted or not wanted? We do want friction on the road, we do want our tyres to work. So that's wanted. Or if you're lucky enough to have a device where you can handwrite on it, then hands on the steering wheel, yes, we still want our hands to be gripped on the steering wheel. So you can see by printing from an application and making it an image and setting it as a background image, we now can write on it as if it were um, a, a resource that we're handing out to our students, but it's in OneNote. Now we'll go through the same process again, but we'll use the drag and drop method. So within my notebook I've um, created a link to my local documents, imagining that I've created that document from um, Word on my desktop and saved it locally. I'm just going to push this page out a bit and we'll scroll down to try and add it to the page in another space. Let's put it over here. We can always arrange these um, later if we wish. So um, instead of uh, printing directly from the program, with some programs I can drag and drop it out here and now I've got a choice to either insert as a printout or attach as a file. I'll choose insert as a printout, opens Word, prints it to OneNote and now we go back to OneNote 
and we have our handout again. Now you can see that it's put it over the top of our previous attempt, but the effect is the same. We've printed out the existing Word document and using a mouse. In this case I'll drag this out and I can resize it. What it has also done is it's in, it has embedded the document so if I do want to open it up in Word I can double click that and it will open up in the application too. Now I'll just move that embedded um, document over so it's out of the way of my in-page navigation using hyperlinks within the notebook. We'll get back to our list of ways of creating resources now and have a look at another one. Our next way of getting content in to become a worksheet or a resource is using the screen clip method. So Cal illustrates this really well in his video and I'll just use the same Word document that I've created and you just have a bit more imagination that there might be some more interesting questions on there than just the ones that I've come up with. So I'm going to use the the um, OneNote screen clipper to create a screen clipping to put onto my resource. It could be any screen clipping, it could be Snagit, it could be the screen clipper within Windows, uh, but I'll just choose to use the screen clipper from OneNote. Um, and I'll just drag that up there so you can see that. So that was creating a screen clipping. I'm also very familiar with the shortcut keys. So the shortcut key for this within OneNote is on Windows 8, Windows key, Shift and S. And I've set my OneNote to save anything that I've screen clipped into my clipboard rather than always asking me where do you want to put it, where do you want to put it. If it's in my clipboard then I'll put it wherever I want to paste it. So we'll get over to our um, resource there about screen clipping and just imagine that we're pasting that in. And that's our resource. Again it is just an image. I can write on it and I could set it to being part of the background. Um, but that's an example of being able to grab some content from oh, I like that question there and that example of something else from a worksheet we'll grab those as well it's in my clipboard go back over here paste it and good thing is that I can arrange that wherever I need to put that maybe I want it to be in a different order so that's the screen clipping method and now let's go back to our list and see what else we can do. Let's look now at the method of taking a picture of that resource that you might have in hard copy with either your phone or, or some app within your phone such as Office Lens and putting it into a OneNote page. Now I've used Office Lens to uh, capture the resource and I'll just show you a couple of screenshots from my phone of what I began to do as the process. So using Office Lens I'm able to just uh, focus on a particular part of the page. I'm not too concerned about what uh, borders have been auto detected. So it's suggesting where I should crop it but it does take the whole photo. Once I've taken that photo I do adjust the cropping um, with this button here and, and adjust where it's going to capture. And this is it. It's been processed by Office Lens and it's been tidied up, flattened and, and heightened some of the contrast of the text and the colours. Uh, then I just take it through the process of saving it to OneNote and OneDrive and I have a section set out for Office Lens captures so I'm always pushing them to the same place and this is where I'm going to be grabbing my Office Lens capture for the handout for today. So I'll go to my personal notebook and this is the Office Lens capture. Now I can copy this from my Office Lens section in my OneNote notebook and my OneDrive into my resource page. So it's just like another image. And we'll go back to our resource. And we'll paste it on the page just below our other demonstration examples there of Office Lens. Just like with the other pictures that we took or printing into OneNote, we can set this as a background image. I'm really actually quite liking that method and then we can um, of course we could resize that beforehand but we can fill this out as a worksheet and it's now another resource another way of getting the information in particularly from hard copy so you might do this also by scanning it with the uh, photocopier that you can send the image to 
uh, via email. Um, but one thing to note too, when we are making photocopies or using our phones, they are high resolution cameras and the files are quite large. So if you use a picture to become a resource, bear in mind that it might make this page quite large. And then therefore, if you've got many students, then you've got um, perhaps each, uh, each page is five megabytes and it begins to make your notebook quite large and perhaps slow to load within um, OneNote online and also when you're trying to synchronize that notebook. So let's go back now and look at the last method that I'm going to show you of how to create a resource. And that method is of course creating a worksheet from scratch in OneNote. So I do have an example of that worksheet. Um, you might recognize it. It looks very similar to the Word document that I created. And I've used tools within OneNote to be able to create the table. And of course, the screen clipping to get the image in there. And I've just pasted things out a bit to be able to um, give some space for the students to answer their questions. Being that it's in OneNote format, there's a lot more that you can do with it. So it also keeps the uh, the notebook size down or the page size down. But a student can, um, if they've got inking abilities, you know, write their answers in there. Or of course, if they're using a keyboard and mouse um, and and working through OneNote online, then they can type their answers in and continue to make their contributions to this homework resource. Now that we have our resource created, I'm going to use this example of the one created in OneNote and we'll take that over to the content section in our class notebook that was created by the OneNote class notebook creator. So we just copy this page. And paste it into our notebook. So we'll put that into our content library and we'll just um, drop it in here and there's our resource created within OneNote so the resource is sitting now in the content section of our class notebook it means that students can't write on it while it's in there but they can take a copy for themselves and put it in their own notebooks and there's our class notebook there so just to recap we've looked at a few methods with creating resources within OneNote. We can print to OneNote with either a drag and drop copy or we can print to it from an application by choosing the OneNote printer. We can use a screen clipping and just grab the pieces of an existing resource that we might want to use. So that even could be clippings off, off the web or, or other resources that you have in digital format. We can take photos or scan the existing hard copies of our resources and then of course we're, we're using that last method of creating the, the resource from scratch within OneNote. We're starting in OneNote and just building out the questions, the tables, the pictures, etc. So you can put in as much work as you want to make your resources look better than my examples. You can also put in other types of resources too, links to videos and other pictures and screenshots. Uh, I've seen some examples from the one EDU team of um, even putting in music files um, and embedding those. Um, we can also embed, you've seen embedding Word documents and PowerPoints and um, far many more methods to be able to make them uh, these worksheets more interactive. So they're not just pieces of paper anymore, they're an electronic document and they can be living and interactive. So um, I'd love to see some of your examples. I'm looking forward to seeing how some of the, my contacts are using this tool. So hopefully this has been useful for you and thanks for watching.